All right. We are ready for the next episode of the Impossible Conversation podcast. And it is with great glee. <laughs> I'm happy to introduce Hambone Littletail, a uh, proprietor of a um, YouTube channel with a few thousand viewers, listeners. And uh, Hambone, a self proclaimed prophet of the end times. And uh, really, all he is is a bodyguard to his, um, his loving companion, Sancho Panza, his incredibly wonderful dog. Um, Hambone, I, I uh, want to first welcome you, so welcome. Well, thank you very much, and it is a great honor to be here. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. I was wondering when we were going to have this impossible conversation, so uh, yeah. thank you very much. I am very honored to be talking to this man, an, a, another guardian of the Doomosphere. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping this is going to be interesting for you and me as well as anyone else who stumbles into it. Um, and why I'm saying it that way is that you know you in particular have had uh, what more than five thousand episodes of your particular shtick, and um, you do it remarkably well and incredibly often. And I, I imagine that that can start to wear on a person. It can start to be like um, even the most extreme news can be normalized. And uh, at least that's what it is for me at my tiny, by comparison, scale. How, how is it for you? Does it, does it start to wear on your ass after a while? Oh, well, obviously, brother, uh, to, to spend as much time as I, as I do down here, it's uh, clearly, but... Uh, I, I just don't know what else to do with the information other than I, 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 I put it out there for anyone who, for whatever reason, anyone who's ready to have this conversation, and it's getting harder to ignore. You know, as, as I say, I spend a, a whole lot of my time just reading the, the mainstream media news to people. Uh, well, I, you know, with my own special brand of reading it, that you don't have to uh, be down in the doomosphere. You simply open up the mainstream media news, especially if you go over to the science pages, yeah. and, and, and there you go. And yeah. uh, I'm putting it out there for anyone who wants to, for whatever reason, is interested in what I think is the most fascinating story on the planet, which is the yeah. collapse of the planet. Absolutely. So th for those folks who don't know you, Hambone, let me just say a few words. So uh, st I stumbled into you about a year or more ago and um, just was thrilled to see your uh, kind of re relaxed um, performance artist style. You know, you're obviously a man with a, your wits about you and have, you know, successful chapters of life that you've come from and into this now... It looks an awful lot to me like you're a man of service now. Uh, and this kind of odd-looking service is to be this performance artist who reads from the mainstream press or from other authors and so on, uh, ranging back, you know, a long time, some, some long-standing authors. Yeah. They're, where their input, where the input of all those different types... Um, has something to do with what we're facing now. And um, you do that with your own sense of humor and your own uh, journalistic style, which is very present, uh, by the way. Folks should know uh, Hambone Littletail is a man of uh, some substantial education that has prepared him to do the, 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 this kind of odd work that he's now doing, which is to bring us these updates and these uh, synopses and analysis of what the heck we're facing, uh, which indeed looks to be uh, the existential uh, downward slide of not only humanity, but um, way too many other species and too much of Earth habitat. Um, so I have found that valuable 
I am imagining that the more than 4,000 people you've got on, you know, uh, subscribe to your YouTube channel find it valuable. Um, I'm wondering if you could speak about um, where you are now, where where this, I think it, you said eight years you've been doing this? I, th well, I... The, the 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 official start date of uh, of what I'm doing would be January fifth, two thousand nine, uh -huh. and my 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 real estate license expired on December thirty first, two thousand eight, and uh, I took five days off between being a clueless fucking moron real estate agent and uh, and house flipper of foreclosures. Took five days off and then was came out of my cocoon on January fifth, two thousand nine. So for the first two years, Humpty Dumpty Tribe was a written blog called Chicken Little Society. And after a couple of years of getting deeper into this rabbit hole, I I determined that Chicken Little was way way too optimistic. The sky is not falling. The sky fell probably back in about 1970. And I also noticed that video is the way to go. I, I prefer to write, but I just understood that no one was reading uh, my, my blog. So I just literally went out there, uh, however many years ago that would be, and um, I think eight years, and... Uh, and, and just started this, and, and I am absolutely amazed. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more amazed that one person subscribed to this channel than I am that 4,000 did. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I mean, I was an absolute nobody. I, I mean, just a complete, total stranger, uh, having no idea what I was doing, and just started doing this. Yeah. And just to, to to see where this I call it my my weird little social experiment in high strangeness, and yeah. and here we are, yeah. Thanksgiving 2017, and it's more is a hell of a lot more terrifying than it was the day that I started. Everything uh, that I was talking about has come true in in, in spades and 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 then some. Yeah. And I do now. Now, just to make sure, uh, if if anybody out there who does not know me, anyone who does know me, knows that me calling myself a doomsday prophet, I am, I am somewhat joking. Uh, I I am not. Uh, all I am is some anybody who pulls their head out of their ass and spends. 30 minutes a day on the mainstream media science pages. Okay, without doing anything else after about, oh, a month of doing this, you too will become a doomsday prophet. You will get the message uh, from whoever that, that we are so fucked. And that and, and, and that's what I mean. But any, but obviously I am not claiming uh, in the biblical sense. But it almost is the biblical sense at this point. But I just want to make that clarification for people who do not know my twisted, ironic sense of humor. Just so you understand that. Now I am uh, an environmental alarmist and the chronicler of the long overdue collapse and fall of global industrial civilization. There's no joke there. Uh, that's the other two parts of my job description. Uh, I'm very much an environmental alarmist. I, am, uh, I, I, am, I make no apologies. I am an unrepentant, unapologetic alarmist. Uh, we need to be ringing every fucking alarm on this planet, brother. Uh, to to you know to shake the, the this planet out of its collective coma and it's a coma. Uh, so anyway, I make no apologies for my passion. I make no apologies for my alarmism. Yeah. Um, so uh, you just kind of nudged into the zone that I was hoping we would get to in our conversation. Today. That didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
you know, I've been grappling an awful lot, uh, particularly these last three years when I was writing The Impossible Conversation and, and uh, vetting the information, learning how to learn about climate change and other um, collapse of systems metrics. Um, I've been probably the, the part that's broken my heart the most is uh, interacting with my family, my dear friends, my yeah. many yeah. friends that I've got. And, uh, and and just all kind of folks from all walks of life. I've had a lot of these impossible conversations, and they've been extraordinary. You know, not all one flavor at all. I, they've been they've spanned the spectrum from remarkably inspiring and connected to the vast majority of them being in that kind of coma that I think you were just describing. And that that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. It to, should. Um, there there are people that I love dearly that I. I know that I really can't talk with them about this time, that the, the times that we are in, and what I like to call the calling of these times. And the calling of these times would would pull out the the core expression of a person who has been courageous enough to wake up to what's going on in these times. And if I could be so bold, I'd say. You've got. You've definitely cracked open your heart in the face of being uh, obviously aware of what's going on, and you have found your calling, and you have made it real, day after day, week after week, for eight years, of uh, relaying not only the the data, but also these other authors and poets and uh, interviews with people. And uh, synthesized it into into something that's uniquely your expression of your calling. Is that safe to say? Uh, I I I am honored by that uh, explanation. Okay. I will uh, I, I I will stand by that. I might not have used those exact same words, but that is why we have other voices, and we do appreciate that's why we're your voice. Bodies, brother. You got it. Well, we need more voices. We need we need more voices down here in the Doomosphere. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to just take it one more step in, in addition to what I was just laying out, because it sounds like you're basically saying, yeah, that's pretty close. And uh, it's certainly uh, pretty close to a description of what's going on for me. You know, I've found my calling in these times. And uh, what I want to mention is in the past, let's see, we're, we're doing this interview in November 2017. It's November 22nd, 2017. Yeah. I always say, and I, and I think it's so important to anyone, I'm just, making YouTube videos, always the first thing that should come out of your mouth is the date, uh, the yeah. month, the day, and the year even. Because, I mean, this thing goes into the YouTube vaults, and it's uh, in, in, in a tiny fraction of YouTubers just put what damn date because it's a, it, it's a chronicling. It's yeah. a chronicling, and so you need to be able to, in order to chronicle, the, the first thing, I guess is my journalism training, the, the yeah. first thing you do is, well, is put the date. So anyway. Got it. Okay. Well, I'll be sure to adjust that for when I post it, and I guess you will too. Yeah. But what I, was, what I was getting at is, in my experience of uh, finally meeting you in person back in October in Boulder, when Carolyn Baker and I were putting together the second of two pilot versions of, uh, of a workshop that we're putting together for people who are uh, newly aware or perhaps been aware for a while of this kind of stuff we're talking about. Yeah. And to give those people a safe environment to be able to share what's truly on their hearts or breaks their hearts and to be able to uh, get more in touch with their version of their calling in these times. And I got to say, you know, it was, it was not only was it just great to meet you. And uh, so I'd recommend anybody who gets a chance when Hambone's on the road and you can meet him, please do. But uh, what I also noticed was that you uh, you have far more than just a great style and uh, a remarkable eye for the the really hard hitting 
uh, elements or metrics of this collapse of, of systems that we've got going on. Um, just because I always learn. Every episode I learn from what you, you gather together. But what's actually been even more potent for me is uh, is to hear the, the way you lay out what this is like for you in a in a day to day, yeah. You know what it's like on your heart. What it's like on for you to try and hold this in your mind, in your heart, in your body, as you have so obviously crossed that line. Instead of having a foot in two worlds, yes, of course you still do, but you know you're more immersed than than ninety nine point some ridiculous amount of <laughs> people on the planet. So I just want to acknowledge that it's been very different since October for me to listen to a few of your your uh, episodes, um, especially the ones where you uh, let yourself get moved. You let yourself uh, crack your heart open in a, in a beautiful way. And um, I, I just would like to say that I, it, it looks amazing on you. It looks great on you, and it's very inspiring. For, for folks like myself, where I've, I'm less committed, you know, than you are. I'm less immersed in. You're you're, you're pretty immersed. Thing. You're pretty immersed, brother. I am, but I but I'm also, <laughs> you know, I'm not 24 seven in it, brother. And, yeah. and uh, you're pretty much there. And so, I was wondering if there's anything you'd like to say about that apparent evolution of allowing yourself to disclose a bit more to open your heart a bit more i wonder if that's true for you and i wonder what it's like for you well i i do want to make a small correction and this is is what i think a lot of people misunderstand about me and probably you and just about doomers in general i probably have my foot in two worlds more than you realize i think people they listen to me ranting for you know between 20 and 30 minutes a day and they think for the next 23 and a half hours you know that I'm floundering around you know being Don Quixote tilting at wind turbines with my little sidekick and and it's really not all you know so you might be giving me too much credit uh, or uh, yeah, you might, if 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 credit's the right word, you know, as people probably know, what I'm going to start doing the day after tomorrow uh, for the fourth year now is is uh, I've actually and, and, and there's no, anyone who acts like the universe does not have a sick, twisted sense of humor. What I am is the the Christmas tree. Now I was promoted last year uh, to the lot manager for the Christmas tree lot for the Austin Optimist Club. Uh, if, if if I could think of a more ironic, absurd, uh, you, you know, to put every bit of my Carlos Castaneda training into one position, it would be a Christmas tree lot manager for the Austin Optimist Club. You know, that's so funny on so many levels. So I, I want people to understand, yeah, that, I, that I'm still out there hawking Christmas trees. Come buy one for me. I, you know, I'm driving around this gas-sucking this gas sucking truck all over the country. I probably put more miles on this truck uh, in the year 2017 than any year in my life. So do understand. And... and and, and and just more generally about the Doomer community, I think that non-Doomers, I don't know what they think we do with our lives. When we get together, do they do they think we just sit around and moan and groan? And you know what I'm saying? And try to outdo each other on who's got the biggest story of how fucked we are today? Over here. it's not that at all that uh, you can carry this information that we're carrying, I mean, in, uh, in, in our brains and more importantly in our hearts, and, and look at this absolute existential horror. And let, let's, let's use the word. I mean, Conrad used it 100 years ago. It is the horror of what is unfolding on this planet. 
yeah, we can go out there and, and, and sell Christmas trees. We can go meet our friends, uh, our non-Doomer friends, and have a margarita and, you know, and go play music till midnight, which is what I hope to be doing Friday night at a big picking party. So just if there's any non-Doomers listening to this, and I can't imagine there's a single non-Doomer on the planet listening to this, but I, I think we get a bad rap that people don't understand I think one of the reasons that non-doomers are so terrified of, of accepting this information is because they think they're going to turn into one of, one of those people. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I just want to make that amplification and clarification uh, yeah. that, that I might not be as immersed. I would say I spend... I would say I spend... Between four and eight hours a day uh, yeah. on this. Yeah. So. Well, uh, Hamble, thank you for that. That you know, I think what we're both doing here <clears throat> is, to some degree, we're we're mapping out what this territory looks like for someone who might be a little less immersed or a little less familiar with this stuff. Yeah. Than yeah. We, or have a different take on it. And. Um, and so I appreciate what you just said, and, and I, I'm clear, and I'm not surprised by what you just said. Um, and I think what I'm, what I'm talking about is um, that next kind of edge or dimension of the map, if you will. It's, it's, it hasn't been drawn out quite as clearly as what you just were describing. And it, you, every once in a while you talk about uh, some Carlos Castaneda concepts that, that you've uh, done your best to kind of integrate into your life. Yeah, yeah. One, other controlled folly and petty tyrant and so on um and i'm with you I've, I've done some work in that dimension and some other energetic realms as well and and i find those very valuable and i think i guess what i want to do is turn back to that that weekend workshop yeah in in boulder and i i think i can speak for carolyn as well that we're what we're clear we're doing is creating an entirely different language to, that goes along with mapping out this where this other world is, where this other foot in this other world, mm -hmm. and it's not an easy thing to do. And so I'm not at all trying to say you're there all the time, and I, I I'm not. And so we, you know, like that. I, I really am saying that there's a there's a there's some subtle uh, edges on this part of the map that I think you've approached some of them. I, I know I've approached a number of them, and I know Carolyn has. She's probably the most prolific author yeah, yeah. on the planet answering the question, who will we be together in the face of these predicaments that we've got going on? And so I uh, am just acknowledging that that's what each of us in our own ways is, is exploring. And I think there are certain pieces of it, of being a human being and trying to map out this new territory that is, it's just, it's a hard thing to do. It's a very challenging thing to do. We, we've never been here as humans. This, this, where we are in humanity, despite the fact that 99.9% .9 of it, we are in literally uncharted territory from here on out. There is, I was actually uh, listening, driving from New Mexico, listening to, to some of my rants, and, I, and I'm always uh, uh, bragging about my, uh, I don't want to make him out my teacher's pet, but this fellow who calls himself Andy Gardner from over there in England, the guy absolutely gets it. And, and he was actually commenting on an interview I was having with another tribes member. And in that conversation, you know, she and I were, were talking about this, that we just think this is an interesting conversation. And then Andy was commenting, you know, taking that as he does. He, he takes my rants and, and, and does the most penetrating analysis. And, and, and his comment was... That yeah, this is just an interesting conversation that we are take take the biggest events in human history. 
I'm talking about, brother, we are right up there with the invention of fire, the invention of agriculture. He was saying, imagine the, the, the collapse of the Roman Empire and multiply it times one million in our faces every day. We are living we are living the single greatest, and by when I say greatest, I don't mean uh, tragically greatest event in the history of our species. And 99.9% .9 of this planet is completely unaware of this, that yeah. this is the most exciting time to be a human being on this planet in the past 200,000 years, and, 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 and people are out buying fucking Christmas trees from the Optimus Club. <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, it just blows my mind that how people, uh, how people can just, it, it, the only word is coma. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So I, I want you to know that I am completely and utterly aligned with what you just said. That's, that's the level at which my heart breaks when I look at my dear, dear friends that I was describing before, and I can't, I can't talk with them about that. I can't even get to the first step of the 50 steps that it takes to get to that level you just described so well. And it breaks my heart because I love them. And I miss them. And do I now not relate with them for some reason? No, I, I've found ways to find, you know, ways to connect, and we still do. But it's, um, it's, a, it's a sad, small uh, version of what's possible that we ended up connecting about. Yeah. yeah. Well, on the, on the flip side of all this is, is what I've decided with my own personal friends, you know, here in South Austin, Texas, it, 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 it's the last thing I, I would want in the world to do to people I love. It is to uh, it makes no, it makes no damn difference. You know, I just I just if you go on my channel, I guess that what comes up is where I just redid my my introductory video to Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and I titled it "Welcome to Humpty Dumpty Tribe." Now get the hell out of here. I do. I, I would. I would not wish my worldview on Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? On my worst enemy on the planet, I would not wish the, the, what the, the inside of the ham bone little tail brain. If, 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 if it's it, it is a it is an ugly, lonely, depressing place to be. To be how where where I am, and, and just realizing the utter hopelessness of this situation. So why should I give, give my my friend shit? Uh, if they wanna if if they wanna buy a two hundred dollar tree from the Austin Optimist Club, I'll sell them one and, and help them set it up in their living room. You know what I'm saying. It's just it, you have to come into this information when you're ready. Yeah. And, and and the fact is that nobody's ready. A tiny, tiny, tiny uh, segment uh, uh, of humanity is is ready to really go there. You know, they you might get a few people, a, a tiny, you know, reading these the, the 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 mainstream media science pages or whatever. The Guardian, uh, taking it to what I call the Guardian NPR level of analysis of what's going down on this planet. But, but that's as deep as they're going to go. That, they, they are not going to peel back this onion. And especially yeah. if they have children and grandchildren. How could they? How could they? Uh, I, you know, I, just imagine what I would sound like, brother, if I had children. Yeah. Uh, I would be an absolute frothing at the mouth maniac. Well, I probably would have killed myself years ago and maybe my children and grandchildren before I killed myself. So thank God, thank God 
Uh, the, the, the best decision I ever made in my entire life since the day I was born was getting a vasectomy at age 22 before I brought any more, more children onto this planet. It's, uh, yeah. it's, 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 that, that is probably the single, on Thanksgiving, if I had to look at the number one thing that I am grateful for, it was that decision not to bring uh, another human being in, in, into, into this pit of fire we're heading into. So yeah. anyway, the buck ends here. Anyway, let me finish. I'll wrap that up. Next question, please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, something you just said sparked me to, to say that um, what Carolyn Baker and I are doing is, is creating this thing, uh, this body of work called uh, livingresilience.net. That's the website, and then you can find out yeah. about the programs and blah, blah, blah. And... Um, what those, what our intention is, is to go uh, down the track that now Carolyn has has paved the way so beautifully. In every one of her books, she's got dozens of different practices that people can take on to reconnect themselves with their deeper self, with others, and with the earth, because that's what we're saying got us here, meaning. We disconnected. Mm -hmm. You know, every time while I was writing the book, I, I kept asking the most basic question I could, which was, what got us here? Like, now that I see the brink so clearly, what got us here? And what got us here was this disconnection. And um, what I'd, I'd like to invite you to uh, is, is really something that I think you're already doing at least a little of, which is to... <laughs> explore this uh, this part of the map that, that still needs fleshing out, that still needs detail. And that's to create a language for and some uh, ways of operating in this unexplored territory. And I think this is, this is the part of me reaching out to you and to a number of other people um, you know, around the world as long as the electronics allows, allow us to do it. <laughs> yep. And I've also got some, some local people, a little, little tribe starting up. To the, we have these conversations, and I, I can't imagine a more important conversation to be had. And what it's about for me is really going to the center of the question, who will we be together in the face of these predicaments? And what, it, what that seems to imply is there is no agenda. There is no outcome to wish for. There is no, uh, nothing to save or fix, but that doesn't preclude if what's in your heart to do, if your calling is to be an activist, then go be an activist. And if, if, uh, if you intend to connect with others, if you intend to be present in the face of these predicaments, then truly what there is left, I've just used that word a couple of times, and I, and I actually mean to use intent, that uh, instead of intending to produce results, which is what our business is usual, yeah, yeah. culture's been about forever, it's what got us here. Instead, with the shared intent and with uh, a commitment to generating a particular presence, that that's what will reconnect us, particularly with first our deeper selves, but also we have a chance to connect with each other in a way that is far more precious, far more delicate and gorgeous and full of grace than anything that I've been exposed to in the business as usual paradigm. Oh. What, 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 well, what's your roadmap to, to, to that? You, you know, it's, uh, I, 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 do, I, I do what I do. You, you know, we, yeah. we have these online communities. I am ready. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little exhausted going this alone. And, I mean, yeah. I, I am ready to, to, you know, to take this to a more human level in my own life, but this this whole idea of these intentional communities and 
and stuff. Uh, I, I don't know if I will ever... I was just interviewing Michael Farragan from Extinction Radio a few days oh. ago, and, and, and he's even given up all hope of ever finding one of these. But the week before, I, I spent a, three evenings at... Uh, at, at Mike Sleva, if you guys are familiar with Mike's, with his little community in, in New Mexico. And, you know, it gave me a... It, it, and, and some of these guys have been there for 20 years. So uh, it, it did feel... It's not, it, it's not right for me simply because New Mexico is not right for me. But uh, we have got to, uh, you know, all we have left is each other from here on out. And, yeah. and, and I don't know. I'm going to spend quite a bit of 2018. I want to start investigating this and going out and visiting a few of these and, and well, whatnot. But yeah. I, I, anyway, I don't know where I'm going with this thought. It's just, it was, but what I, what I was commenting uh, about your workshop uh, yep. at the at the workshop and the in this little review video I did of it last week what the most important thing for me personally that I got out of out, out of that and it's an, anybody who gets a chance to take this workshop do it for this reason if nothing else and it was the first time the first time brother since the since I went down this rabbit hole that I got to spend three days three days in the company of about a dozen other people where I could say whatever anything that came out of my mouth you know I would not just immediately be attacked and just just to have that just to, that that's not having to walk around on eggshells and and literally being in a community of people who who understand how utterly fucked we are and that we could sit down in, in a group and, and and have these discussions and, and as you say try to figure out how to map our way but just that freedom without this sensor you know you know exactly what i'm talking about brother any of us do down here this edit button or from your, from inside or this big sensor that we don't have some uh, whatever from uh, some advertising firm uh, just wanting to squash us for being able to voice what, what we understand and just it, and that is so important. I, I didn't realize how important that was yeah. and, and yeah. until I was actually in a room with you and a, and Carolyn and, and a dozen other people where I could talk like this without having a bunch of fucking trolls coming on, you know, trying to slap me down. So anyway, I do appreciate uh, you bringing me that, you and Carolyn bringing me that opportunity. And that was the number one thing that I took out of there, telling me that I want to feel like this more in my future. Right. And uh, so well, whatever I can do and whatever any of us can do, we need to be doing it. But I don't really know. You know, so we split up. So we were together for th three days, and then we all, you know, we all just exploded again off into our, you know, ricocheting around the country. And we're in, in, in on Monday morning, we were back in our lives, and you know, yeah. going about our lives. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, thank you for laying that out. I appreciate hearing about that. And, um, you know, where I'm personally headed, uh, Carolyn and I have been talking about this a lot. We, we basically are designing these workshops to be the, the kind of experience and support that we wished we had when we got exposed yeah. to this notion of the brinks and the predicaments and collapse of systems that we're talking about. And um, <clears throat> for me personally, I've, I've had some very good experiences in intentional communities for years, and uh, uh, it's rare. It's rare as, as hen's teeth, and it's uh, something that I don't think but a tiny, tiny fraction of a percent of people will ever experience. So if not that, then what, says my little pea brain. And, and uh, 
So what we're designing into this year, when we put together the, the stuff that we want to offer, Carolyn and I, um, we're, we're going to be really beefing up that, um, the, the part of the body of work about reconnecting with other people. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll be doing all three to some degree, meaning the <clears throat> reconnecting with our deeper selves, reconnecting with the earth. But what you're talking about right now, and, and I think what is going to be our first priority is going to be the reconnection with others. And I, I get a sense that there is the next level of uh, kind of building out our skill set and our capacity to be with each other, whether it's if we're lucky enough to do that live in the neighborhood where we live, or if we have to do something online, um, I, I've had a remarkable amount of success in both, in the in kind of experimental rounds that we've been doing. And um, I'm very excited to be able to offer some amount of coaching and guidance about that, and, and really in seminar fashion, because we certainly are not inventing the wheel here. I'm looking forward to getting schooled by people who have their own successful pockets of this going on yeah, around yeah, the world. Yeah. And, you know, nothing matters more to me. When I'm in that kind of environment you were just describing about the weekend in Boulder, I'm lucky enough to have that here where I live in southern Oregon. I've got a number of circles of, of people that I get to sit with on a regular basis, and, and we are a safe container for each other. We are a, a support network. We're a, a space of love and appreciation and of grace for each other <clears throat> that, um, that is truly the coin of the realm for me now. You know, obviously money is not going to be worth a damn thing very soon and and uh so many pieces of what we've been trained my, what i've been trained my whole life i'm supposed to value and, and seek after my in all my adult expressions none of that means a damn thing and what i'm looking for is building out this uh sense of where more and more of who i interact with are my tribe yeah. people, yeah. kindred spirits people that are that kind of safe environment where I can let my heart crack open in a good, conscious, actually beautiful way, like you were just describing. So I, I just wanted to say that kind of previews of coming attractions and also share a little bit about what's already working pretty well in my neighborhood. And, and uh, I want to let you know, uh, Hambone, you're always welcome over here in Southern Oregon into any of these circles. I'd love to expose you to them and them to you, you to them and them to you. But also, um, you know, we've been offering these safe circle calls. Uh, it's not much, but it's a great start. It's uh, the first, third, and whenever there is one, the fifth Tuesday of every month, we offer uh, these safe circle calls for an hour in the evening. And um, if that sounds of interest, it's a no-cost thing, and it, there's no ob obligation to show up. Yeah. But uh, if that sounds of interest to anyone who's listening to this podcast, um, you can reach me at safecircle at gmail.com and uh, just let me know that you would like to be included on the invitation list, uh, which the invitation would come in the form of an email a couple of days before each of those Tuesdays I was describing. And uh, just give me your first name, last name, and email address, and we'll hook you up and hope to see you there. So thanks for sitting through all that. I just wanted to give a Oh, yeah. Some... And, and while I'm thinking of it, because I'm, you know, I'm recording this to, uh, to, to put out there on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, but my guess is in 15 minutes, we're, if we're still talking in 15 minutes, that my camera is just going to shut off. So what I want, if there's anybody listening to this interview on Humpty Dumpty Tribe and it just shuts off all of a sudden, you're going to be able to continue this conversation on your recording device, right? You're a little more high tech. So where can people go that are listening to this and want to want to listen to the end of it if if mine shuts off where where are you gonna, where can we find your version of this interview yeah great so i have two podcasts um 
I have the the one that's a little closer in flavor and uh, <laughs> tone to the Humpty Dumpty Tribe. It's uh, I call it the Impossible Conversation podcast, and <clears throat> then and that's where this will be posted. Uh, so you could look on my um, my YouTube channel, The Impossible Conversation, and that should be there. And then. Um, It'll also be posted on our website, which is livingresilience.net. And um, I'd also like to also just mention a different podcast that I do uh, called The Poetry of Predicament. And that's meant to be a little less uh, kind of uh, hard-edged, as we can tend to be here, and a little bit more diplomatic for people who uh, you know, need that style. You don't wave around a we are so fuck sign on that one. Uh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so anyway, that one's the Poetry of Predicament channel, and it's also posted on livingresilience.net. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Okay, does there anyone in Humpty Dumpty tribe who, who wants to continue this impossible conversation after my little low-tech camera slam shut? So anyway, that's where, where were we in this uh, conversation before that commercial interruption? <laughs> Well, uh, I'd like to just you know go back a couple of loops ago and just make sure that I complete it. And, and that is, I was mentioning that not only in the form of what you do, you know, the content and so on is, is just always great, and your style and your humor, I just appreciate. But I, I really just want to acknowledge, again, the amount that you've been allowing your heart to open up and, and for you to let us know. Um, the ups and downs, and also uh, when you are just feeling a wave of love coming through. Because what I've noticed in myself, and I, I, I don't want to project it onto you, but I, I can see some similarities, is when, I, um, when I'm just going through my day and I'm in uh, up to my earlobes in the business as usual world, and I'm especially when I'm going through those lists of articles, much like you do, um, it doesn't take much for me to just be one walking, talking, grumbling, uh, you know, pissed off motherfucker. And um, that's not, uh, I, I, one thing I know is that might be sort of entertaining or sort of uh, have a moment or two of interest or even uh, sarcastic humor, but there's not much life in it. And well, it's very cathartic. It's, it, 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 if nothing else, the reason I do this is simply for the catharsis. It's simply yeah. getting this shit off my and just not bottling it up. Yeah. Uh, so, so it is cathartic. But obviously, if, if you walk around like that, twenty-four hours a day, the example I always use is, is, is Michael Rupert. Yeah. Uh, he lost his sense of humor. He, that, that, and that's the bottom line. If you if if you cannot, I, I don't care if it's like my sense of humor. If it's sick, twisted, dark, black, apocalyptic humor. If, if, if whatever humor that you can hold on to into this situation. If if you lose your sense of humor. Uh, as we get deeper and deeper into this predicament. It, it's over, brother. You, you might as well be, uh, you know, Michael Rupert. But I, I, I'm not ready to stick a gun in, in my uh, in my mouth and pull the trigger quite yet. Uh, yeah. The Vizsla Gauls aren't quite at my door yet. But yeah. you know, you've got to if if anybody listening to this starts to feel like they're losing their sense. And you can be depressed and have a sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I, I, I'm not saying shame on you for being depressed and angry. You can be depressed and angry and hopeless and still have a sense of humor. I mean, it's, it's the, the sense of humor is, is, is one of the few gifts... And it's one of the few things that I own that so far, you know, right up, to, and I've been suicidal many times, but right up, you know, right up and until the last minute, uh, I, I, I'm going to be, you know, leave them laughing. I, the, the tomb, you know, my tombstone, but it's already been taken. It's down there. You've probably heard of this, but it's down there in Key West. 
I told you I was sick. Uh, you know, I, that's my, the, I want that to be my tombstone. I told you I was sick. Uh, you know, leave them laughing. You've got to uh, leave them laughing. Uh, and, and, and that's what I try to do on my channel with my little bullshit detector buttons and my no shit Sherlock buttons. You know, yeah. you've got to... You, 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 you've, 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 just figure out some way to stay above the, the Michael uh, Rupert level of hopelessness. Yeah. Well, I, I absolutely get that about you. And, and your humor has been present since day one, and you continue to just build it out. And I love that. And I, I guess what I'm pointing out is if that could be considered, you know, if we're talking about boxing here, if that's the left hook that you've got and you do it really well, what I'm talking about is also combining it with the right. And the right might be said to be the, our ability to crack open our heart mm -hmm. volitionally and consciously yeah. with each other. And I think that the two together are about as strong an inner toolkit yeah. as we have when we're facing the scale of predicament that you described so beautifully earlier on. I mean, this is the biggest event in human history by several orders of magnitude. And the only thing that I can see that stands a chance to, to match that scale is this combination of humor and... To be the ability to be real, to be authentic with one's grief, to allow one's heart to crack open, because you know we we really can um, only love that which we can grieve, yeah. and vice versa. We can only grieve that which we love, and if we get normalized to all the hell that is so easy to point out and see in our world we will get further and further from that love. And I and I, I guess I'm getting down to, you know, the bottom line of what I'm acknowledging it for is, you know, in your sharing in the past couple of weeks, just a few, there you had one that was just kind of a false start three-minute video in which you just literally choked up. And, and I want to let you know that that meant a huge amount to me. And I think that made a huge difference in, in ways that I, I can't quite quantify right now, but I want you to know it, it's very, very important to see, to see your disclosure, your sharing like that. Um, it it was heart rending to me and uh, and wonderful. So thank you for that. Yeah, well, I you know I, I I rarely put my outtakes on there because one of the things I I viciously defend on my channel. Every one of my videos are first take. They are unscripted, unrehearsed, unedited. Uh, if I say it, it stays for the record. If uh, I actually had one of my testicles hanging out of my shorts one time on my video. That's why I, someone was asking me why I never wear shorts on my videos. And, and I don't take it, you know, I, I don't clean up my, and I don't come back and say, man, well, I do say I wish I could have said something different, but you know what I'm saying, I, it, it, it's up there, it's raw, it, it is raw streaming, just almost stream of consciousness that comes out, and it's very rare that I start a video a second time. Yeah. And, uh, and and when I do, then I obviously I will I will just toss out the the false starts. But I decided to put that one up, uh, and 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 that it really wasn't about Sancho. Uh, Sancho is my little dog. It was what I was. That was that video just acknowledging, and I'm not going to open up the can of worms that I've been into that uh, it, it was it was a false start on the video where I was thanking my my tribes members for their for their votes of support that they what what came out of all of that shit that I went through last week an unbelievable amount of shit is that uh, is 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 that uh, I uh, the flip side of it, the, the flip side of it was uh, that at the same time 
that I was getting, I mean, dumped on by and by by people down here in in the Doomosphere. Unbelievably amazing how this works, uh, brother. Is I had I, I got more subscribers uh, last week than in any seven day history in in Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and I'm. And I got more donations, uh, financial donations, in the last seven days than in any time in history. And, and there you go. And that is the takeaway that, the, that, that love trumps hate. That, that's the bottom line is, yeah. uh, is, is the, what was proven to me that love trumps hate. And, and I did. I, 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 I started that video and as you say, uh, choked up and, uh, you know, my little dog, you could see, he, he, well, you saw his reaction to me doing that. Yep. And uh, that is that is why I love my little dog. And, and anybody out there, guys, if you are depressed, if you're letting this get to you, and you do not have, if you if you are all alone down this rabbit hole, and and you don't have a a a, a, a just another living being in your life, get down to the pound. And save one, you know, a dog or a cat, and, and get yourself a, a literally, literally an emotional support animal. This little dog has saved my life, and I cannot uh, recommend this if, if you're down there feeling alone with with, with all of these millions of uh, unwanted dogs and cats. Anyway, I'm getting I'm getting off course a little bit, but. Just, just some of these simple steps you can take, and the, and the love will be returned. I assure you, in spades. So that that's one recommend one, one you know real solid recommendation I can give to anybody is is go get you a little dog from the pound. Well, Hambone, I'm I'm inclined to wrap this particular interview up. Um, so that we can both be under an hour and so on. With yes, 56 a, minutes, only, so that would be perfect. Only with the promise that we can keep this conversation going from time to time in 2018. Definitely, as long as, as, long as the Internet's up, brother. And so right. I'm just, well, I'm going to wrap up like I do, uh, as I mentioned in, and I think I can do this in three minutes, uh, as I mentioned in your, in your workshop, what I think... Uh, that virtually nobody, including my own subscribers, are hearing me in all of this doom and gloom. I start off as often as I can. It is a beautiful day, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise. And I close my video with the only advice that I have, really, for anybody on an individual level is get out there on this beautiful day in paradise, in the end times, and get out there and enjoy it while you still can, because this whole thing could come down tomorrow. And, and it, it, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, is my little dog and I are going to get out on this beautiful day and enjoy it. So I do appreciate uh, you checking in with me, and that's the only advice I have. And what well, advice do you have for my I, listeners? I don't know about advice, but at this moment, I just want to let you know I love you, brother. I love the work you do. I love your um, overlord there, Sancho Panza. <laughs> and, uh, I look forward he to is it. my overlord. He called it, uh, you were saying I was his bodyguard. Are you kidding? Uh, that dog is my well, that dog is my heart guard. If I'm his yeah. bodyguard, he's my heart guard. And so, so uh, Hambone, thank you so much for your time, for your heart, and I look forward to uh, our next chance to to get together and uh, map out some new territory. And Thanks. I love you too, brother. And uh, keep up the good fight and onward through the fog, amigo. <laughs> So we're going to hang up and talk for a minute? Uh, I've, I, I don't need to hang up. I, uh, I've turned off my... Oh, you drive. Anyway, well, let me say what I do. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can, guys. Bye, guys.